this one is not political unless you try extremely hard to make it political. No, this one is really for anybody, but in particular, I want to make it for my friend Nitin uh, over there in India. Hi, Nitin. Uh, don't mind if other people see this as well, of course. Uh, I believe uh, Nitin is in Simla. When my dad was a young boy, he was born in India, and uh, he uh, often spent the summers in the hills of Simla. I believe an absolutely beautiful place, and as Nitin knows, a place I would truly love to visit, as that country and those people are in my blood. Anyway, Nitin, let me get on to what this one is about, and if anybody else wants to learn some things from it or whatever, of course you're most welcome. As you know, and everyone who watches my videos will know, I'm still trying desperately hard to learn German. I haven't really got the money to go to proper classes. I pick up bits on YouTube. I use Google Translate and occasionally I've still got some of the BBC uh, course left on CD for German for beginners. I love languages. I love cultures. I love the arts, right? But knitting particularly drew my attention to something that I said I would do for him. We're talking about Cockney rhyming a slang. I expect loads of you know already what it is, but perhaps if you are new to learning the English language, and I'm not going to go, oh, it's the most brilliant language in the entire world. I mean, your language is Shakespeare, your language, um, your language is a poet. It's, it's a language. It's quite a beautiful language, but I'm sure your own language is equally as beautiful, equally as meaningful, and I too would love to learn some of your language. But to get back to the point of this, get back on to what I was going to talk about, Cockney rhyming slang. Or to put it in an accent, Governor, it could be Cockney, Cockney rhyming slang. Well, I'll do the first bit in Cockney, and I'm not taking the mickey out of a particular group of people in London, by the way. Of course I'm not. The Cockneys are a lovely people, often within central London. And it has been said, what, born within the sound of Bow Bells. There's a big church in London, or is there was, called Bow. And if you could hear the Bow Bells, you were a Cockney or a Cockney. And you were born within the sound of Bow Bells. So here are some rhyming slang expressions knitted. And anyone else who's listening, okay? I've written a few down just for reminders, but I can generally, um, Bill, I can generally remember quite a few. Going up the apples and pears. Oh, going up the apples and pears to Bedfordshire. Apples and pears. Stairs. Stairs. Trouble and strife. I have a few problems with my trouble and strife. Only last night I came in and the trouble and like strife didn't half give me grief. She gave me grief like something chronic does my trouble and strife. Trouble and strife. Wife. Not the sort of phrase you would expect to hear from Jacob Rees Mogg. Well, unless of course he was talking... Um, and pretending to be somebody else. Now, another rather more recent one, and this isn't particularly rhyming slang or anything, but it comes, as with all language, language develops, and it's partly due to culture and outside influences and whatever. God knitting, we stole enough words from you lot. Take um, our uh, garment for writing. The Jodhpur. The Jodhpur actually from the name of a place in India. But let me get to this new, more recent one. It's all gone a bit peak tong. <laughs> it's all gone a bit peak tong, mate. It's all gone a bit peak tong. It's all gone a bit wrong. Peak tong? Wrong. Well, I'm just going to hop in a jam jar and I'm going to be up the frog and toad. Hop in jam jar. There's my jam jar. I'm in. And I'm up the frog and toad. I'm going to get in my car 
I'm going to drive up the road. But isn't it so much more fun? Isn't it so much more colourful to say, I'm going to pop in a jam jar and go up the frog and toad. It's brilliant. This, these people are great. They're lovely. They're lovely. They're warm. They're kind. They're loving. They're good people. They're what this country is about. And they shouldn't be voting for Farage or the Tory party or any of that cack. They're warm, loving people. So that was that one. And perhaps when he went up the frog and toad, he may have been wearing his whistle and flute. My whistle and flute. Popping up the frog and toad in the jam jar just to pick up rather than where, where, notice the way they put the uh on the end, where my whistle and flute, whistle and flute. Not quite like playing the old skin flute. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Know what I mean? No, the whistle and flute. His suit, dear man. He is suitably attired in his suit. Very dapper chap. Dapper chap here. In a wonderful suit. Perhaps from, perhaps from Savile Row. Perhaps from where Mr. Farage got his suit. Before it was suitably, I love playing words, covered in McDonald's milkshake. So that's suit, whistle and flute. And we've already covered up the wooden hair hill to Bedfordshire. Oh, mate, I've got to get a break, mate. you got to let me off, geezer. you got to, geezer, I like geezer. you got to, I've got to go, mate. I've got to go. you you got to let me off, ain't you, geezer? Geezer, I, what, what do you want to break for, peasant? Come, peasant, take more phone calls. Press that button on your screen. Come on, you need to take more phone calls here, but geese, geese, instead of geezer. I, I, I gotta have a break. Why? Well, I need a fucking pony and... Sorry about the swear word. I need a fucking pony and trap. You mean you want to go outside this call centre and you want to get into a pony and trap? That is, being pulled by the pony with the trap or the cart attached. I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I can't give you a break to go and get into a pony and trap. Nah, geez, I need a crap. That one speaks for itself. Now, some other sort of expressions. I mean, they may be called idioms. Depends on how wide you want to be with the definition. Many of them are probably not so much in common use, but they have been in use at some stage. As black as, as black as night, as black as coal, as black as Newgate's knocker. Knocker. The knocker on Newgate Jail. Newgate was a jail in London, and it was so overcrowded and filthy and dirty and there was so much smog and pollution that the knocker on its door became totally black. Hmm. Perhaps they never let the prisoners out to clean it. So it's as black as Newgate's knocker. Oh, and I could also be, if anything else happens to go wrong with this, the old ticker here. If anything goes wrong with the old ticker, I might end up totally, might end up totally brown bread. Absolutely brown bread. I'm not going to be toasted. I'm not going to appear in a loaf. Uh, use your loaf. Use your loaf. No, I'm not going to be in a loaf. I could be dead. Totally brown bread. Or, yes, perhaps to put it as Reese Monk might put it. Yeah, I understand the gentleman was completely brown bread. Yeah. yeah he was brown bread and I'm well bred. I think, I, 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 I think royalty are well bred, but I don't know about him. I mean, he's just, he's a peasant. His brown bread, as in dead. Right, another one I'll come to, and we're going to finish soon, in case you're getting bored, but if you're not getting bored, stick with me, because I'm quite enjoying this. Um, this is an expression that came about during World War Two, and it comes about from advertising, actually. And it isn't, obviously, advertising that was present now. But if you look it up, you can probably find the origin of it on Google. And it is the phrase, gone for a Burton. Well, what happened to that chappy when we when we came back off that 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 mission over Dresden? 
Yeah, I know, mate. I think he's gone for a Burton. Yeah. Sad, mate. I know. Yeah, he got. They fell on us, the bloody enemy fighters, mate. They fell on us, and yeah, so I know. Sadly, he's gone for a Burton, sir. Gone for a Burton. Dead. Let me just tell you the origin between the phrase, because behind the uh, phrase, it's a really interesting origin. Apparently, at that time, there was an advert for Burton Beer. And uh, I'd lived in Nottingham at some stage of my life. My father retired to uh, Chilwell. And Burton was a brewery in Nottingham. And um, the beer, apparently, they were producing was so good that people were kind of dropping everything and just leaving for a beer. So they had apparently an advert going on at the time where there were two or three men carrying a ladder. Yeah, and this ladder's kind of going through the big doorway at the end. And the middle man looks around and goes, Oi! Where's Fred? And they probably focus on a pub and they go, oh, he's gone for a Burton, mate. Gone for a Burton. Great to see how that came about. Um, another one. People might even tell you, I'm getting to the end of my rope with you. Rope, end of rope. Um, running out of patience. Can't take any more steam coming out the ears really frustrated really angry heartbreak heart rate going ding 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 not good for the old cardiovascular system okay one you probably will have heard of um pulling my leg geezer yeah you're pulling my leg aren't you mate yeah? you're pulling my leg pulling my leg aren't you yeah? pulling my leg um joking fooling um being just funny about something it's not really true you're pulling his leg telling him that something has happened i mean like i don't know you're pulling my leg saying um nigel farage has become a british mp <laughs> that's that's pulling my leg mate aren't you you're pulling my leg origin easy um apparently when they used to hang you by the neck until you were dead it wasn't a quick death didn't snap the old vertebrae there on the cervical spine and then apparently if it's right you're completely and utterly brown bread nope um you you died actually excuse me let's go wipe my nose you died actually by slow strangulation and if you had some of your friends around uh, to kind of watch the execution which as i'm sure the tories would like to bring back as a public spectacle like, hey i mean we make awfully lots of money selling tickets for that wouldn't we public spectacle execution and it would give the blighters something to be afraid of yeah well if you had your friends around they could help you die a bit quicker by pulling on your legs <laughs> thus tightening the rope around your neck meaning you die quicker couple of last ones in a state well i could be in a state i could be in the state of mississippi the state of i don't know the state of madness. I could be in a state, in a state, usually agitated in, you know, don't know what to do, all a bit sort of, perhaps even slightly mentally disturbed or, you know, at least in a state of worry and angst, in a state. Another famous one, um, and I think this one does apply to Mr. Farage. I've used it so often, oh, I love it. I'm just going to use it for you lot once again. A swivel-eyed loon. <laughs> Swivel-eyed loon, it speaks for itself. Cold as summer out there, or becoming, becoming summer out there, cold as. Cold as a witch's tit. To be honest, I've never met a witch. And I guess even if they were out in the cold, I guess any part of their anatomy could become cold. And it is a bit sexist, I guess, but I do kind of like it. Cold as a witch's tit. And brass monkey weather. Yes, it's so cold that even the even the balls are freezing off of brass monkeys. It's a bit brass monkey out there. Oh, bloody brass monkey weather, mate. Saw a brass monkey. He's looking for a bloody world, mate. Okay, that's it. English, if you want to learn a few expressions now look tit for tat yeah i'm out to learn german as i keep saying can somebody put me some german on video like i've done here some expressions go through them with me 
and maybe we can exchange some videos, eh? I'd love to do it, please. If you're a native or a non-native German speaker, again, if you are even doing German for A-level, O-level, degree level, I don't care. If you're a qualified linguist who speaks German, could you maybe, please, 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 help some guy like me out? Bitte? Bye.